say that they feed a sort of post-aristocratic misanthropy. Look at our own aristocracy. They probably lost power about 1912. They were never shot like in the Soviet Union. They were never beheaded like in revolutionary France in 200 years before. But they have lost everything in a way because their function has been taken from them, hasn't it? for those schools, the reason they were bred in the first place, the reason for all their privileges and so on, has been taken away. The fascination with the Lord Lucan case in the 70s, the sort of decline of that class, you know, he listens to Hitler's speeches at Oxford, beats the nanny to death, can't even get the right woman in the, in the, in the basement, this sort of thing, couldn't even get that right, you know, couldn't even get the crime right, you know, it's the decline of a class, isn't it, you know, going down, and knowing they've gone down as well, it's sort of Sir Oswald Mosley, his son enjoys being dressed up as a woman and spanked, and his son's just died of a heroin overdose. And it's not, and there, and yet Oswald Mosley is in that family chain. You don't need to really think that there is a sort of efflorescence there. It's a bit unfair on that family and so on. But don't forget, these, this was a class that was born to pitilessness and rule. This was a class that identified with eagles. That's why it put them on their shields and on their ties and on their schools. And now look at them. But of course, they have, in a sense, joined the rest, haven't they? They've joined the mass. It, what they once were no longer matters. Cameron sums it up in a strange sort of way. Traditionally, since the 1960s, the Tories have always elected pushing middle class people with whom the mass of their electoral support can identify. It was always said Douglas Hume would be the last of the old breed. He was Premier when I was born. He would be the last of the old breed that would survive and thrive. When asked about unemployment in 1961, Douglas Hume said, no, there's a room for a second gamekeeper on my estate. And people said he was out of touch. Out of touch. And he was out of touch, but they didn't face it. But he thought that was a quite commodious and moral answer, you see. Cameron is strange because all of the ease, the ease before the camera, the ease before people, no notes, look at me, not a trembling lip, all of that ease is part of the genetics of what he partly comes out of. And yet all of his values are bourgeois. All of his values are middling and mercantile. All of his values are this society as it now is. Would Douglas Hume have joined or even given money to United Against Fascism, who he would have regarded as smelly little people on the margins of society, who were a left-wing rabble who probably need to be beating the grass somewhere or in my regiment, you see what I mean? He, the idea that he would identify with these people because the real enemy represents the seeds of the aristocracy from which one is, that wouldn't occur to him. He was too much what he was, basically, as a form to really consider these, these lies and these legitimate and this flight of fancy. One comes to the most controversial area of Evola's entire prognosis, and this is the belief that Jewishness is responsible for decline, and that they are a distinct and another race that pushes upon things and causes things to fall and be destroyed. These are the views, of course, the belief that there is a morphic element in the nature of the decline that has made him so untouchable and controversial. The interesting thing is when he was approached about the protocols of the elders of Zion, which is believed by all liberal humanist scholars to be a forgery, and a forgery of the Akron of secret police based upon a, uh, an alleged French novel, I think, of the 19th century, Evelyn said, I'm not concerned whether it's a forgery or not, which is a very interesting response, because in Evelyn's view of the world, his occultistic and hermetic view of the world, you can indicate something through its reversal. You can indicate something through metaphorization. Something can be emotionally true and not completely fact. A text can be used to exemplify truths deeper than its own surface. This is a religious view of the text, of course, that the text does not end with itself. It's a medieval view and is based upon a science of linguistic study called hermeneutics, where you would look at every word you would look at every paragraph, you would look at every piece of syntax to 
deconstruct for essence rather than deconstruct to find the absence of essence. In the Western world, if you go to university now and you do any humanities, any arts, any liberal arts or any social science course, you will come across an ideology called deconstruction. Even vaguely, the semi-educated have heard of it. This is a viewpoint that says that any essentialisms, race, caste isn't an essentialism, but it begins to become one in the minds of man, belief in God, gender, and so on. Any essentialism leads to the gates of Auschwitz. This is what deconstruction is based on as a theory. Therefore, you look at every text, you look at every film, because they're obsessed with mass culture, you see, looking at what the masses look at and what they're fed by the capitalist cultural machine. And they look at this and they say, oh, look, dangerous essentialism there. Do you see that in that John Wayne film? Do you see the way he spoke to the Red Indian? Sorry, Native American, you know, this sort of thing. You see that sort of thing. And you look at these things and you break them down and you break them down again and you break down the element of sort of David Duke, quote unquote, logic that could be said to lie in that particular phrasing and so on. But the sort of analysis that Evola maintains is what you might call constructionism rather than deconstructionism. And that's building upon the essences of things and bringing out their discriminatory differences. So to him, the fact that that text may have been put into circulation by the Akrana, the Zara secret police, as a profound hermetic metaphorization for courses of history which may or may not be occurring is worthy of study. He again returns to the idea that everything has, if you want war with the Islamic world, the towers will fall. If you want a pacifist and isolationist America to enter the Great War, a, a particular boat with civilians on board but weapons underneath will be torpedoed by the Germans. If you want to get the isolationist boobs of middle America into a global struggle in the early 1940s, you allow the prospect of an attack that you know is going to happen to occur and you make sure that your aircraft carriers are not there and you blame the middling officers who are there for the incompetence retrospectively because it is the moment to kickstart democratic engagement with heroic and Spartan activities. Who can doubt that there is a streak of the Spartans? When an American Marine goes up a beach in Iwo Jima, or when he fights in Fallujah, some of the modern world has certainly fallen away for that man as he faces oblivion in warriorship against the other, even within the modern. And people like Evola and Younger would realize that. There's even at times in the extremity of modern warfare a return to the individual. What about these American pilots and these other pilots, these Russian pilots, who fly in these planes and the warrior is part of the plane. You know they have a computer in their visor and they have all sorts of statistics that are coming up before them and it's like a man who's an army fighting on his own, isn't it? He's got a amount of force in under his wings which is equivalent to an army of centuries ago. So you have a return to elite individuals trained only for killing and warriorship at the top tier of present Western advanced military metaphysics. Because the interesting thing about Evola's way of thinking is it's creative. Most right-wing people are pessimistic introverts who don't like the world they were born into. But Evola seems to me to be, in some ways, an extravagant, optimistic aristocrat who always sees not the best side of everything, but the most heroic side of everything that goes beyond even itself, even if the protocols of the elders of Zion in accordance with his diction was a lie and can be proved to be such. The fact that millions were motivated to believe in it, millions to reject its causation, that people fought out the consequences and the consequences of the consequences in relation to even some of those ideas means that it is of great specificity and import. Nietzsche has the idea that a man stands on the edge of a pond and he skims a pebble, a pebble into the pond and it skips across the water. You know when you get the skimming right and it goes and it goes and it goes and wave upon wave moves upon the surface and you can't predict the formulation of the 
wave and the current that it leads into, and that history has unknown consequences. The Maoist general who was asked by an American sympathiser on the, after the Maoist Long March itself, partly mythological, what's your view of the French Revolution? And he memorably it's too early to tell, because it's only 200 years back. That is the sort of perspective that Evola had. And although there will be crushing defeats, and men are now of his sort, aristocrats of his sort, for whom the modern world has no time, no time, play polo, waste your money, sort of go to brothels, gamble all the time, there's no role for you. The world is ruled by machines and money and committees and Barack Obama. You know, American writers call Obama Obamination. Like, instead of abomination, that's um, a villain in a Marvel comic, actually. But never mind, isn't he the signification for everything that is declining in America? And isn't all of these middle class tax revolt type movements, which are 100%, should we call them grassroots American? Aren't they really within the allowed channels of opposition? It's a socialist, it's all about tax, it's not about anything else, it's all within the remit of healthcare, budgetary constraints and barbecues on sale, etc. etc. What about the deficit? Aren't all of these movements and the sort of rage that they contain elements and spectrums of what he would call anti-modernity or semi-anti-modernity within modernity? None of us know what the future will hold, but it is quite clear that unless people of advanced type in our group believe in some of the traditions that they come out of again, they will disappear. And in Evelyn's view, they will deserve to disappear. So my view is whatever one's view, whatever one's system of faith, and don't forget in the Greek world, you could disbelieve in the gods and think they were metaphors, you could kneel before a statue of them, or you could have a philosophical belief in between the two. And all were part of the same culture, all were part of the same city-state, and if called upon as a preacher's citizen to defend it, even Socrates would stand in line with his shield and his spear. All of Evola's books are now available on the internet. The most controversial passages about morphology and ethnicity are all available on the internet. Read Julius Evola. Read An Aristocrat for the Past and the Future and look back at the perennial traditions that are part and parcel of Western civilization and can fuel the imagination and fire even of those who don't entirely believe in them. Thank you very much. most important thing in your life? Is it making as much money as possible? Is it getting along with other people and being popular? Is it security? Is it happiness? Well, of course, most of us would like to have financial security, and we would like to be happy. But for many of us, there's something more important than security and personal happiness. I'm talking now to the more serious-minded members of our audience, to the ones who are capable of understanding things like duty and personal responsibility. Duty and responsibility, those are almost bad words these days, definitely not fashionable. We've been conditioned by the media to be suspicious of people who talk about such things. This is 